latest in North Central Washington, go to ncwlife.com or find us on Facebook. Got a news tip? Email us at news at ncwlife.com or call 888-2020. Good Friday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to today's top stories, let's take a quick look outside our weather window. And once again today, what a gorgeous spring day around north central Washington. We were uh, forecasting 80 degrees for a high today. I don't know if we're going to make it or not. I checked the temperature before the news time and we were about 76 degrees, mainly because a lot of high cloudiness has now moved in ahead of a storm system as we look down at the beautiful Wenatchee Valley from our cross camera. Through Friday today, there we go. Temperatures once again very warm, uh, but as we move into the weekend then, we will see rain showers developing, especially for us overnight tonight and early on Saturday morning. And boy, will we ever cool off too. Highs only in the upper 50s, lower and middle 60s for us. And we could even see some breezy southwest winds at times before our weather gets much better as we move into next week. Your complete weather forecast coming up a little bit later on. And now a few of the news stories we're following for you tonight. For the third time in three years, the NCW Fair has hired a new manager. And if you're going to the Wenatchee Wild Games this weekend, you won't be able to park at the Town Toyota Center. But first we begin tonight. Today it became official. Earlier in the day, the U.S. House of Representatives passed Bill H.R. 4. That keeps in place Grant County Airport's Terminal Radar Approach Control, or TRACON. In 2015, Grant County International Airport's TRACON was listed among FAA facilities nationwide for review for, considera uh, for consolidation. Rather. 4th District U.S. Representative Dan Newhouse of Washington says the bill protecting TRACON was a matter of national safety because military facilities would lose a vital training and reserve base location. Safeguards the Grant County International Airport's radar facility from consolidation uh, under a military operation exemption. By doing this, it would have impaired our national safety because, as you know, military facilities then would lose a vital training and reserve base station. So I'm grateful for, again, bipartisan support from my Washington colleagues, the delegation, to include this language that preserves the radar facility in Moses Lake and ensures military read readiness for our warfighters across the Pacific Northwest, as well as fostering economic benefits in Grant County. Essentially, what would have happened is, had this consolidation happened, there would be no air traffic controllers at the Grant County International Airport, which is a surprisingly busy, busy airport. It would all have been consolidated out of Spokane uh, to the detriment of our, of our military readiness. Grant County's TRACON facility provides unique and tailored services for Fairchild Air Force Base, Joint Base lewis McCord, the U.S. Forest Service, Whidbey Island Naval Air, Air Station, the aerospace industry, and the local community. For the third time in three years, the NCW Fair has hired a new manager. Current Executive Director of Bonaventure Senior Living, Carolyn Morley, will take over the post vacated last summer by Lonnie Strom. Douglas County Commissioners interviewed six candidates since the job was posted late last year. The fair manager is responsible for putting the, on the annual fair as well as the maintenance of the fairgrounds. The manager also promotes the fairground facilities for other events. Morley will get first-hand training at this year's fair from former longtime fair manager Ed Daling. Well, if you're going to the Wenatchee Wild Games this weekend, you won't be able to park at the Town Toyota Center. The carnival for Apple Blossom is taking up the parking lot there. Town Toyota Center General Manager Mark Miller says they have some off-site parking with shuttle buses. With parking, will be at a premium. And so ride the shuttle bus. You can either pick up the shuttle bus at Shopco or also the corner of Miller in Walla Walla. And there's a map on our website, um, which is one block away from Town Toyota Center. So you can park at those two spots and shuttle in or walk in from, from Stemelk and see everybody at 7 o'clock Friday and Saturday night for the wild game. And, of course, Carnival will be open in the afternoon, also in the evening. 
Once again, besides Walla Walla Point Park, there are two off-site parking lots being used with four shuttle buses running back and forth from the Shopco parking lot and the Stamilt parking lot just off North Miller across from Walla Walla Avenue. Coming up next, we'll give you a tour of the Columbia Breaks Fire Interpretive Center. And this Tuesday, May 1st, is Law Day, set aside to celebrate the rule of law in the United States. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Hi, I'm Cordell Schroeder owner of East Wenatchee Mobile Storage. If you're thinking about making a move anytime soon, check out the East Wenatchee Mini Storage brand new mobile storage service. They drop it off at your location, you pack it, and they pick it up and store it in their protected warehouse at East Wenatchee for as long as you need. When you're ready, they'll drop it off at your new home or office. East Wenatchee Mini Storage is excited to offer this brand new service to our region. Call 509-884-8643 or find us on the web at ewministorage.com. I have a doctor who knows what they're talking about. It's just so much more hands-on and friendly than anywhere else I've ever been. It's really great to walk into somewhere where you feel welcomed and you feel accepted. We've just been grateful for the care and respect that we've been given there. And here when I come to visit my doctor, I'm not afraid to ask questions. It's not just about getting you in and out. I love my care, it's CBCH. it's awesome. Give it a try. <laughs> Welcome back. In another news, on Monday we brought you a story about the Columbia Breaks Fire Interpretive Center and their collaboration with local fire groups for training. Today we take a deeper look at the fire center and their mission in the community. Maggie Bailey, a longtime board member, explains. Columbia Breaks is uh, named after these rock formations uh, behind me that form the breaks and that's what they call and so we took our name Columbia Breaks and in the early days uh, the project was begun by Nancy Belt, a uh, former Forest Service uh, employee who had the idea of saving lookouts and she felt like so many of them were being destroyed that part of the forest history, fire, firefighting history was being uh, going to be burned up or destroyed. So she wrote a grant and uh, wrote a, th uh, a proposal and uh, money was granted for that and so that was the beginning of the Columbia Breaks Fire Interpretive Center Foundation. And this location was chosen because it has a natural uh, amphitheater uh, toward the back of the property and has a big beautiful knoll that has lots of flowers in the spring and it was 17 and a half acres which we felt would be suitable for you know a multi-million dollar interpretive center theme so it's the project's been going for 30 years this year and it's very slow growing we're unpaid and uh, so all of our work is volunteer and we started by cleaning up the trash on the property and uh, and so things have evolved uh, very conservative board uh, we've gotten grants from um, the state of Washington uh, legislature and have a numerous following of people. The center is a popular spot for local schools and families with trails and picnic space. Bailey says the board encourages the community to get involved. Well, we'd like to build, we have projects and we may, we're phasal. And so our next steps is to have a building that is enclosed to start putting in our interpretive themes where the public can come and uh, interact. In fact, the uh, museum in Wenatchee is donating to our project the entire FireWise project and all their photos and all their literature, but the requirement is that we have an enclosed building. 
So we're talking about, I don't know, $75,000 to $100,000 for a structure that can be protective of that exhibit and be interchangeable for other exhibits. Is one way the public can help us uh, come walk our site, uh, donate, and help us realize our dreams. And we do try to publicize um, our activities. And we have a newsletter that goes out twice a year. And if they, you want to be, if anyone wants to be on the list, uh, just uh, call Dave Spees, our president. We don't have an office that's staffed right now, but. Um, Dave Spees is the president of Columbia Breaks and he has a phone number and we'd love to put you on our list and, and uh, they can support that way or come out and help us clean the property every now and then, you know, and walk through it. This Tuesday, May 1st, is Law Day, set aside to celebrate the rule of law in the United States. The annual national event highlights the freedoms Americans share and the importance of the rule of law, legal processes, and the courts have within our democracy. In conjunction with Law Day, the Washington State Court of Appeals Division III will hear five cases next Tuesday at Central Washington University. The Washington Supreme Court came to Central in 2016 and the university did a great job of welcoming them. So I like to think that we have a good reputation within the judicial community, and the Court of Appeals wanted to follow on that success that had been mapped out by CWU earlier. That's Professor Paul Neffer, the chair of Central's Law and Justice Department, which is hosting the court session. It's set for 9.30 a.m. until 1 p.m. in the University's Student Union and Recreation Center Theater, and it's open to the public. It involves cases from Kittitas, Yakima, Benton, Chelan, and Okanagan counties. The proceedings will include appeals of criminal convictions, malpractice, and the statute of limitations. And an award will be handed out for related, rather, to violating the Public Records Act. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, your sports update with Eric Granstrom and our feature story today. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Stay with us. In our experience, some people are just cut out for charter college and for success in a new career. These charter types are hard workers. Charter types go above and beyond. And charter types are responsible. If you're ready to get to work making a better future for yourself, you're just our type. Charter College. We work to get you to work. J&J Snack Foods makes a lot of dough-filled products. It's really hard to attract labor in this area. We've reached out to Goodwill, and Goodwill came through to help us get that achieved. John started here at the plant a couple of months ago. We promoted him to a dough maker. He's been doing well. I'm actually doing great. I'm finally getting more notice and appreciated for my work here. I love the products we make here. If you're struggling finding the labor that you need, reach out to Goodwill. Goodwill, there's more behind the store. Papa Murphy's presents a fresh take on fresh. Here's the deal. If it comes from a freezer, not fresh. Box, not fresh. Bag, not fresh. Fresh means just chopped vegetables. Cheese grated by us daily. Fresh means we don't even have ovens. Because you have an oven. So you can feel good about feeding it to your home bacon XL NY pizza. Topped with giant pepperoni and ground sausage on an extra large foldable New York style crust. Just $8.99. Papa Murphy's, love at 425 degrees. And now, it's a sports update on the NCW Live channel. And a happy finally Friday. It's been eight days of rested workouts for the Wenatchee Wild, and now the next phase of their incredible postseason journey continues. After winning the Fred Page Cup eight days ago, the Wild will begin a quest to capture the Doyle Cup tonight at the Town Toyota Center against the Spruce Grove Saints out of the Alberta Junior Hockey League. The Doyle Cup was last contested for in 2012 before the Western Canadian Cup was formed from 2013 to 2017. The Western Canada Cup replaced the Doyle Cup. Now, the Spruce Grove Saints competed for the Doyle Cup in 2010 and 2011, losing in a seven-game series to the eventual Canadian champions, the Vernon Vipers. Our checker and assistant coach Chris Clark were guests on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley this morning. Clarkie was asked about his thoughts on Spruce Grove. 
watching one minute of video, I can tell you that I got a tremendous amount of respect for that team because uh, to win in the playoffs and, and seven game series is not easy. Um, I do know that after watching video, they're an extremely hard working group. Um, they're not going to give you anything for free. They're very similar to some teams that we've played in the past and that um, they're going to make you fight for every inch of ice you get. And uh, that's the way it should be. That's playoff hockey. They block a ton of shots. And uh, if you make a mistake or turn the puck over, they have some guys on their team that can put the puck in the back of the net. So um, they, they try to limit you offensively. They, they, their, their shots against total is pretty low uh, per game. But, um, you know, we're going to have to work to create offense. And uh, hopefully we can continue to play with speed and do what we do. And, uh, you know what, at the end of the day, may the best team win. Clark, he says preparation for the Saints hasn't differed from any other opponent all season. We'll give them some things to think about when they're out there, uh, some things to look for, some tendencies. But at the end of the day, uh, I, I'm, and I'm sure Spruce Grove is the same way, you want to play your game. You want to do what you do well. You want to do what's gotten you to this point. And uh, we're not going to change a whole bunch because we're now playing a new team. Um, that's just never been our way. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, again, both teams are going to do what they do well. And um, hopefully it's another great series. And I know it'll be two great games, possibly three uh, here this weekend. The puck will drop at 7.05 tonight and tomorrow if they split 7.05 on Sunday. Turning to the Les Schwab prep scoreboard from Thursday, Chelan blanked Okanagan in soccer while Manson got by Tenasket. We have one baseball score from yesterday. Waterville Mansfield finished up its rain-delayed game with Soap Lake coming out on top 13-3. Couple of softball doubleheaders. Brewster swept a pair from Cashmere while Waterville Mansfield edged Pateras in two. The Wenatchee Panther girls golf team came out on top in the fifth Big Nine pod yesterday at Three Lakes. Wenatchee carted a 407, four shots in front of Davis. Eastmont finished in fourth. Let's take a look at the prep schedule for the weekend starting today with baseball. Eastmont hosts a doubleheader with uh, the Sunnyside Grizzlies. Wenatchee continues its battle for first place at the Big Nine with Moses Lake on the road for two. Chelan's on the road at Brewster for a single game. Coming up tomorrow, Cashmere hosts Cascade in a twin bill. Chelan's at Connell for two, while Pateras hosts Waterville Man. Field. Manson will host Brewster in a single game Saturday at 11 o'clock. Softball action today. Eastmont travels to Sunnyside while Wenatchee hosts Moses Lake. Both are doubleheaders and both started a little bit earlier. Cashmere hosting Cascade for a single game coming up tomorrow. Brewster plays at Manson in a twin bill while Chelan hosts Granger for two beginning at 1 o'clock. We'll feature soccer tonight on the NCW Live Channel as Wenatchee hosts Davis in a crucial late season Big Nine contest at Lee Bofto Field of the Apple Bowl. That all starts at 7 with Sebastian Moraga and Matt Wisett. Also, Eastmont at West Valley tonight at 7. Cashmere travels to Bridgeport, while Manson is also on the road at Oroville. That's tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Chelan hosts Granger at 1 o'clock. Also on the prep weekend schedule, any at tennis at, Pater is at Pateras today in tennis. Uh, Chelan, Cashmere, and Wenatchee tennis teams are in Spokane at Mead High School today and tomorrow for the Inland Empire Tournament. Track today, any at in Cashmere in Cascade. Tomorrow, Wenatchee hosting Eastmont, Moses Lake in Cascade. Boys golf today, the Wenatchee Panthers on the road at Lake City, Idaho. Again, reminder of our broadcast schedule for the weekend starts tonight with soccer at 7 o'clock. Then tomorrow, live coverage of the Kai's Fiber Youth Parade at 11 o'clock, followed by Eastmont West Valley Soccer at 2. Prince George Wenatchee, that magical game 5 at 7 o'clock Sunday. Eastmont Wenatchee Soccer from back in March in the Kai's Fiber Youth Parade rebroadcast at 7 o'clock. Uh, also, coming up uh, here on the sports schedule for the weekend, it's a busy one. Apple Blossom Bash Softball Tournament, the Horse Lake Trail Runs, the Apple Blossom Pickleball Tournament, and the Letter to Evans 150 is happening at Wenatchee Valley's Super Oval. Uh, that is going to be a big race on the weekend. Turning to baseball, Kyle Seeger went three for four and delivered a, what proved to be the game-winning RBI and a double in the eighth inning as the Mariners beat Cleveland 5-4 last night. Those two teams meet up again for three more over the weekend. Finally, first round of the NFL draft went pretty much as expected last night with Baker Mayfield going number one, Sa Saquon Barkley number two, Sam Bart Donald number three. A lot of question marks about the Seahawks pick of Rashad Penny with the 27th pick. Now we've got to wait till the fourth round for the Seahawks' next selection. That's Sports News. I'm Eric Grandstrom. Grant, back to you. Thank you, Eric. Over 4,500 kids from all over the Northwest will march through the streets of Wenatchee tomorrow for the annual Kai's Fiber Youth Parade. NCW Life's Dan Kuntz has a preview. The lineup features 10 marching bands, some from as far away as Fife in Harbor Point, Along with the Apple Blossom Festival, Junior Royalty, consisting of Queen Rachel Carter and Princesses Farrah Moody and Ava Smeller. Every local elementary school, public and private, will be represented along with various preschools, youth clubs, sports teams, law enforcement, fire departments, and dignitaries. 
The parade begins at 11 Saturday morning at Triangle Park, runs down Arondo Avenue, and then turns north on Mission Street before concluding at the corner of Mission and 5th. Crews from the City of Wenatchee's Public Works Department will begin closing the parade route to traffic from start to finish beginning at 7 a.m. Wenatchee Avenue will remain open throughout the day. If you can't be there in person, we will have live coverage of the Kai's Fiber Youth Parade beginning at 11 Saturday morning and re-airing the parade Sunday night at 7. For NCW Life News, I'm Dan Kuntz. Thank you, Dan. And we'll be back with a look at what's happening around the valley this weekend and your complete weather forecast right after this. Lake Chelan Mailboxes find solutions and the best price for all your shipping needs, including UPS, FedEx, and the U.S. Postal Service. We offer a variety of services, including quality copies of all sizes, faxing, scanning, sending and receiving email, laminating, and notarizing. Enjoy browsing through our large selection of greeting cards. Lake Chelan Mailboxes supports our military, fire victims, and our community. Come see us at the Plaza in Lake Chelan. The all-new Yamaha Wolverine X4 offers four times the proven off-road capability, four times the comfort, and four times the confidence to deliver four times the excitement on your next outdoor adventure. Lake Wenatchee YMCA Camp programs focus on our four core values of caring, honesty, respect, and responsibility. Make this summer's memories last a lifetime. Pick your theme week today with a wide variety of safe and engaging activities. Lake Wenatchee YMCA Camp is the ultimate summer fun in the sun camp for children, teens, and families. Reserve your child's week today. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. Well, Apple Blossom isn't the only event happening around the Wenatchee Valley this weekend. NCW Life's Megan McPherson gives us a preview of what we can do around the valley this weekend. Here's a look at what's on tap this weekend around the Wenatchee Valley. Columbia Coral's A Bit of Broadway and All That Jazz will be the theme of this official 2018 Washington State Apple Blossom Festival event, featuring Broadway tunes and American Jazz Classics Friday, April 27th at 7.30 p.m. at the Wenatchee High School. A medley of Gershwin favorites will be included along with guest jazz musicians from the Wenatchee area. You will also enjoy a stage performance from a Broadway musical by Wenatchee's own state kids. Tickets will be available at the door. The 2018 WSU Chelan Douglas County Master Gardener Plant Sale will be at Pibus Market Saturday, April 28th from 9 to 2. It will feature more than 20 varieties of tomatoes, including both heirloom and favorite hybrids. Plenty of the winning tomatoes from the Tomato Gala held last August will be for sale. A good selection of perennials, vegetables, and herbs grown by Master Gardeners will also be available, as well as the ever-popular Walla Walla perennials. There will be between 3,000 to 4,000 plants for sale. The Horse Lake Half Marathon, 7-mile, and 5-mile trail runs take place Saturday at 8 a.m. at the Horse Lake Reserve Trailhead. The 1,700-acre Horse Lake Reserve is located in the Wenatchee Foothills and is owned by the Chelan Douglas Land Trust. The reserve is known for its plant life and stunning views of the North Cascades in the Wenatchee River and Columbia River Valleys. The 6th Annual Trail Run event is again a fundraiser for the Chelan Douglas Land Trust. Proceeds will go directly to trail conservation and maintenance at the Horse Lake Reserve. Join the nation's largest group ride here in Wenatchee with the Life is a Cycle event on Saturday from 3.30 to 5.30. Your very own Regional Bike Advisory Council has identified a route that will start at Saddle Rock Pub and Brewery, go to the Saddle Rock Trailhead, and then back. Upon completion of the ride, you will receive some awesome swag and a $5 discount on the Saddle Rock's Wenatchee Pizza. And finally, head to the Chelan County Expo Center Saturday and Sunday for the Two Rivers Medieval Fair. This started as Wenatchee Renaissance Fair in 2008 and was founded as a community activity to promote learning and provide family-friendly activities in the community. The goal is still to provide a fun and affordable opportunity to learn and enjoy history with friends and family. Watch nights jousting, meet lords and ladies, talk to ogres and fairies, listen to storytellers and minstrels, relax at the cider garden featuring local ciders from Pair Up, shop for unique wares, 
watch out for pirates, and feast at the food court. For more information on this weekend's events, visit ncwlife.com. Time now for a check of your North Central Washington weather forecast. But first, let's take another look outside our weather window as we take a look at the Wenatchee Valley from our cross camera. And uh, you can see clouds now moving in, especially to our west and our north. We are seeing a couple of weather systems we'll talk about in a second bringing us that cloudiness. But boy, not before we climbed into the upper 70s with some 80s around the area. And with high pressure aloft, we enjoyed, as I mentioned, another unseasonably warm weather day. And it'll last for one more afternoon with temperatures flirting with 80 degrees today. Our official high temperature yesterday was 78, which was 13 degrees above our normal of 65. Big changes though arrive overnight as a uh, cutoff low in the Pacific pivots inland with a steady stream of moisture. That will happen in our early morning hours tonight and into early Saturday. Uh, currently, uh, that system is over western Oregon. It will shift east and track across eastern Washington overnight as a cold front. And you know what that means? Cooler temperatures. You can tell that by our loop. We're starting to turn back to green and even some blues on our map. The main swath of precipitation pushes across central Washington late tonight and will shift northward on Saturday. Precips amount mainly around two tenths to four tenths of an inch of moisture around north central Washington. The upper low and associated cold front look to hang around over the region Saturday night into Sunday with daytime highs struggling to reach the mid 50s to mid 60s this weekend. We have a 70% chance of rain late tonight and early Saturday morning and a 50% chance of mainly scattered showers before noon on Saturday. And we will stay on the cool side Sunday and Monday, but notice our final loop right there Monday. High pressure off the coast and that will push us back into the upper 60s on Tuesday and even upper 70s as we get into late next week. Let's take a look at your forecast now and what a forecast for apple blossom the first couple of days. Maybe 80 degrees today, but look at the big cool down for Saturday. 64, good chance for rain. 63 on Sunday, 65 Monday with mostly cloudy skies. And then high pressure returns and we will be back into the low to mid 70s by midweek next week. Well, it's day number two at the Apple Blossom Festival and that means day number two of NCW Life Jay Seebeck's Food Court Review. Tonight he tries the ever popular gyro. Right, All right, thank you. All right, food review day number two out here at Colossus Euros, southeastern part of the park, across the way from Dippin' Dots in the Young Life booth. Okay, we get one bite in rating. As always, I like to get a lot of heavy on the tzatziki sauce whenever I get a Euro. One bite. I mean, it's what you expect out of a euro. It's got all the, you can get the lamb, the tomato, the feta cheese, the tzatziki. And put this one at about a 7.6. So, Colossus Euros here in the park. Come and try them. You know, that second bite I just had right there, packed full of tzatziki. If I had that bite back there, I would have changed my rating, but the rating's final. So, we're sticking with it. 7.6. Jay, you're tough. And that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-6295. Also, keep it right here on the NCW Life channel Monday morning for Wake Up Wenatchee Valley with host Dan Kuntz and news with Steve Hare. Thanks for joining us and have a great Apple Blossom weekend. This is TV. This is TV Set Free. TV Everywhere from Localtel sets you free to watch what you want, where you want. Catch your favorite networks, including live TV, ready to watch on any web-connected device.
for no extra charge. That's TV set free. Enjoy the extra value Localtel delivers with TV everywhere. Visit localtel.net and sign up today.